Hi everyone, welcome back. Another pencil and wash today. Just wetting my brush. I wet the paper all over. It's um, Bockingford paper again, my usual Bockingford. Um, it's £140 cold pressed. Do a nice simple sky today, I don't want nothing too too outrageous. Okay. <coughs> so I'm using cobalt blue. Cerulean blue, uh, yeah, cerulean blue, just at the bottom there. It's like that sort of fading. Um, <coughs> just take off the excess. That's okay. Right, I'm not going to really loads of clouds or anything. I just want a few sort of, I don't know, sort of just little wispy bits in there. Just a clean damp brush just to uh, try and remove some of the paint before it dries. Just going to put cobalt blue just at the back of these trees just to sort of suggest um, some distance. a little bit on oh, edge there, never mind. <coughs> well, that'll be okay when it dries, I hope. Right, okay. Right, okay, I'll just let that dry for a minute. Okay, so that's nice and dry now. It's dried a little bit streaky actually. I wanted sort of a streaky cloud effect, but not so much of a streaky painting effect, if that makes sense. But anyway, that's what we're left with, so that's what we'll uh, have to work with. So now I'm going to use um, a mix of yellow ochre and hooker's green. More on the yellow ochre side, just for this tree here. I'm going to start painting this in. Trying to be nice and uh, soft with the brush so I don't 
and pull up too much graphite. Hopefully I won't pull up any graphite, but it's never guaranteed doing this. Okay. Now I've got a mix of cobalt blue, hooker's green, with just a touch of yellow ochre. I'm just going to go into the shaded areas a little bit, just, just darken them off a little bit. And just let it run into the yellow paint as well. Okay. Should be okay. Yeah, that should be fine. Right, I'll move on to this one now then. Um, I'm going to use a different mix. This is, well, it's not a different mix. It's the same colours but just mixed in different um, strengths. It's hooker's green um, and just yellow ochre but with just more hooker's green in it than that one. still wet. I've got a mix of lemon yellow and cadmium um, yellow. That's the yellow mix I'm going to be using throughout the painting. So if you're going to just say yellow it's just going to be those two colours mixed together. Just putting those on the lighter areas. Perhaps a bit too strong. Dampen those off a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> and the cobalt blue and hooker's green. Um, just dab a little bit of that just here and there as well. mainly in the shaded areas. Okay. I'm going to use the same mix actually, I'm just going to water it down just a touch just for these distant trees. a little bit of the yellow just dropped in, just on the edge. Okay. Um, I bet that one's not quite dry yet, is it? Oh, I don't know. Um, that one won't be though. Okay, I'll start um, painting in some of the distance now. Cobalt blue, cadmium red, and a touch of raw umber. So a bit of a uh, sort of a purple colour. So I'm going to start roughly painting in these sort of distant tree shapes. Just a touch of cobalt blue um, while the paint's still wet. Just drop a little bit of that in just to create a little bit more distance. Just 
Let's see if I can't just soften some of the tops of those off a little bit. not it's still wet um, okay well I'll just have to let that dry for a minute then okay so that should be nice and dry now so I'll start painting this tree uh, same mix hooker's green and yellow ochre Carefully going in and out of the branches on the tree next to it. some of the yellow mix and just drop that in just on the edge and on the light areas sort of blue um, hooker's green mix I'm just going to put a little bit of that in just in some of the shaded areas it's actually dried off a little bit there it's not sort of running in so I'll just get a clean damp brush and just give it a hand just to uh, just to blend in a little bit sort of purple colour in there, just if there's some distant trees or something in the background there. Apologies if I'm mumbling, I'll try and um, talk louder. Okay, the trouble is when I get painting, it's, um, it's hard to talk, I get so sort of lost in it, you know, right there in the zone and I just forget to raise the volume of my voice. <laughs> okay, they're dry aren't they? So now I'll paint this one in with the same same mix. And again, just a little bit of the uh, the yellow mix just on the edges and the light areas. And some of the shadow colour dropped in while it's still wet. Okay. Right now with that same colour I've got mixed on my palette the hooker's green and the yellow ochre. I'm going to paint in this hedge along here. Under 
the trees as well, it probably won't show too much, but um, at least I can say I've done it. It just tints it just a little bit, hardly anything at all, but I can just just make it out. Just here, just paint that in as well. There we go. Right, okay, so I'll just let that dry then before I do the foreground. Right, that's nice and dry, time for the foreground. I'm actually drying these off camera with a hairdryer and then editing them together so you don't uh, lose too much viewing. You don't want to really see me with a hairdryer going over it, do you? Right, so now I've got, um, for the foreground, what I'm going to use, for this part, I'm going to use the the yellow mix, which is just lemon yellow and cadmium, lemon, uh, cadmium yellow. Um, and then I'm going to come down and let that fade into uh, hooker's green and yellow ochre, with just a touch of the yellow mix in it, just to brighten it up a little bit. And then right in this, this bottom part, the foreground here I'm just going to go over that with the the shadow color that I use for the trees so I'll get some paint on the brush might look a bit sort of brighter and garish initially but um, it will be okay he says famous last words So now I'm going to use the green, let that fade into it. All the way down. And then that shadow colour, just along the bottom there. Maybe even just a touch of that shadow colour, just some of these areas just here. Right, okay, I'll just clean my brush. And while that's um, drying, <coughs> I'm going to start just painting um, some of the background in a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to use a mix of um, cadmium red and hooker's green. And it's quite a dark mix, you won't expect this for a bit. In fact, I'm just going to water it down just a touch. It's quite a dark mix, but um, I want these, these trees there to stand out. It's not going to be too dark. Remember it always dries um, a shade or two lighter as well. So. Maybe a touch too dark. I'll just get a damp brush and just um, lift a little bit of the paint off. Okay, that looks about right. So the same mix again, but I'm adding a little bit more water to it. Um, I kind of lost where those. Dark trees, well I think that was one there. Another one there.
<coughs> they look a bit too evenly spaced out, don't they? Um, okay, that's what we'll do. We'll add a few more. Bring that all the way along to there. So it's sort of a cluster of trees or something. for a minute. Okay, I'm just going to um, use the shadow colour just to sort of go under there a little bit. I can see a few little white spots which are not looking brilliant so I'm just going to put a light wash of the cobalt blue and hooker's green just under there. So I'm just going to paint in the tree trunks, but I've just um, <laughs> uh, painted either side. Um, doesn't matter. I'll just be careful. I'm just going to use um, it's a very very light wash of um, cobalt blue. I'm just testing it on a piece of scrap paper at the side of me. on the left hand side just as if it's um, um, shadow just about do it. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to get a white gel pen. Is that dry in the foreground? Ooh, a bit damp, but I might get away with it. I'm just going to get a white gel pen and um, just put a few little sparklers in this area here. Um, I'm just wondering whether to sort of... Let's just put a few in and just see how we go. Just a few little white flowers or something. Um, before I do, I'm just wondering if I ought to put another glaze over that, but I think it looks okay. I'm going to leave it to that. It's just a simple pencil and wash, so I'll leave it to that and I'll just, um, just put a few little... You can use white gouache for this, but... Um, on my tube at the minute it's not handy so I'll just I'll just use this. It's not working properly. I think because the paper still is a little bit damp 
Okay, what I'll do, I'll give it a minute to completely dry off and I'll take the masking tape off and then I'll come back and uh, put a few sparklers in there. Right, okay, so I've took the masking tape off and uh, it's all dry now. I can't get the gel pen to work on it properly. Um, it really needs to be sort of darker for it to stand out more, so I ran upstairs and I got my white gouache and uh, I'm just going to use a few little spots of this, just, just here and there. Getting it straight out of the tube. I've not got it on a palette or anything. I'm just literally dipping, dipping my brush into the tube. Just a little bit of water on the brush as well. Maybe one or two, just little tiny ones, just over there. Don't want to overdo this. You could actually um, go crazy and, and put a riot of, of colour over there. You know, loads of little flowers, all different colours. Turn it into a poppy field or anything really. I mean, it's just a sort of a, a typical English meadow scene. Um, I'm just going to put just just a few little white flowers, just a few little sparklers, just to sort of you know brighten this sort of area up here. I don't want to overdo it though. Maybe just one or two just along there. A bit much just there, aren't we? There is actually um, another video that accompanies this one. I don't know if it's going to upload um, before or after this, but it's basically just showing um, how I drew the trees. It's not a brilliant video, it's just a few, you know, a few little tips. Okay, I can see the, the paints kind of soaking into the paper again, which sort of lessens the effect of it, so just go over them just a little bit. I'm trying to find, well I'm not trying to find, I'm actually putting these in the darker areas on the painting so that they have more impact and stand out a little bit more. Um, but they are dissolving into the paper a little bit. So I'm trying to get them on quite thick. Okay, I think that'll do. Don't want to overdo it. Nice, simple, warm, sunny afternoon. Nice and peaceful English meadow scene. And there we go. You can see how um, easy that was watercolour wise. Um, you know, just a few simple light washes um, and still allowing the pencil work to show through to give us the detail. And it's quite, you know, quite an effective method really so I hope that was um, helpful to you thanks very much for viewing I'll see you next time bye for now